Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In the past, I've done two videos on Photoshop's new Adjustment Brush 2. Despite doing two videos on the tool already, I haven't covered all of the features of it. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the features of the new Adjustment Brush tool that I didn't talk about in those previous two videos. And judging by some of the comments left uh, on those previous two videos, it seems that many of you aren't too impressed with the Adjustment Brush tool. Many have said, well, you could do the exact same thing with Adjustment Layers. For example, I have this photo of the model sitting on the grass. She's a little dark. I'd like to brighten her up. Well, I could use a Brightness Contrast Adjustment Layer to brighten her up. The way I would do that is I would get a Selection Tool first and select the model. Once I have the marching ants going around the model, I would click on the Brightness Contrast Adjustment Layer, and because I have an active selection, it will automatically mask the Adjustment Layer so that the Adjustment will only be applied to the model. Well, you could do the same exact thing with the Adjustment Brush Tool, and sometimes it's a little faster with the Adjustment Brush Tool. Let me show you. To use the tool, the keyboard shortcut is the B key on your keyboard. B is in brush. Now, unfortunately, that B keyboard shortcut is shared by a lot of different brushes in Photoshop. So you need to go over to the, over to the tool panel and then long left press on the actual brush tool. And you'll see all of the different brushes in Photoshop. And you can see they all share that B keyboard shortcut. Just make sure you're using the adjustment brush tool. And by the way, on my website, anthonymorganti.com, I have a free PDF download that you could print, of, print at home of all of the keyboard shortcuts found in Photoshop. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to it so you could download your copy. Now I have the Adjustment Brush tool active. I want to use this Brightness Contrast Adjustment layer, but you'll look over here and you can see that there is an Object Selection tool available. Just click on that, make it active, and when you hover over something that it recognizes as an object, for example, the model, you'll get an overlay. Just click with left mouse button to apply the adjustment to that object. If you go over to the layers panel, you'll see we have a mask built in. It applied the brightness contrast adjustment layer and it moved brightness and contrast up. Now, if you want to make sure that the object selection tool worked properly and selected your object, you could do one of two things. You could go over here and just click on the overlay checkbox so you could see the overlay. It looks pretty good. What I prefer to do, though, is hold in the Alt Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and click directly on the mask, and you'll see the mask. And I like that way a little better. I think it did a pretty good job. Hold that Alt Option key in again and click on the mask again to go back to the normal layer. Now, it added brightness and contrast. I don't like what it did, so I'm just going to reset it by clicking right there, and I want to add some brightness and maybe just a little contrast. And that's it on that. Now let's go to another image. What if you want to select multiple things? For example, I have this image, and I'd like to increase the vibrance and or saturation of the sky and the water. So I don't want to apply the adjustment to the model or the rocks at all. So we have the, uh, the, we have the adjustment brush tool active. I want to go and increase vibrance and I'm going to get the object selection tool and you'll notice that it may take a second for it to kick in but once it does you can see we have the sky selected. So click with left mouse button and you'll notice we have a mask of the sky. Hold that option key in on my Mac, Alt key on a PC and you can see there's our mask. But I want to add the water to it. Well just go up to the object selection tool up here again and click on it again and hover over the water, and then click on it, and it adds it to the mask. Now again, you could view the mask by clicking on the overlay here, but I really prefer to hold in the Alt Option key and click on the actual mask in the Layers panel. The reason for that is I could see that it missed some areas. Where the sun is, you could see it missed, and right at the horizon line it missed. But the thing is, once you apply the object selection mask, or you use the object selection, once you use the object selection tool and click with left mouse button, 
you'll immediately have a normal everyday brush, and it could be a plus brush or a minus brush. In this case, I want to add to the mask with the plus, br plus brush. So I'll come in here and I'll just add all this. I'll come over here. I'll just try to do it very quickly in this little part of sky up in here. Well, all right. And you could add like the water, kind of the some of the ripples in the water, maybe if you want to be really fussy. But I think that looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to hold in that Alt Option key, click directly on the mask. Now, for this adjustment layer, it put Vibrance at plus 100. I definitely don't want that. I think saturation usually on a sunset would be over the top. So I don't want to do that. So I do want to add some vibrance, but not a lot. So there's before and there's after. Now you can see how it added it just to the sky and the water and it didn't add it to the model or the rocks. Well, one more example. Let's go to this image and let's say I want to change the color of the background. What do you do if say the object selection tool can't recognize an object. So I have the adjustment brush tool active. I'm going to go here and get the object selection brush. But before I do that, I want to change the color. So I'm going to go to use saturation. So I'm going to change the color of the background. We're going to get that object selection tool. And you'll notice if I hover over the background, it's not doing anything. But if I hover over the model, it is, but it's not getting everything. It's getting part of the model. It's missing part of this, whatever, what do you call that thing, that life-saving thing. It's missing the megaphone. It was missing some of the cable. What you could do, though, is as you could do with a normal everyday object selection tool, is you could just draw like a rectangle over the object you want selected. So in this case, I'll go in the far left here, and I'll just draw this rectangle over what I want selected and let go. And it will find the object under there. You can double check the mask by holding in the Alt Option key and clicking on the mask. And you can see that it now selected the model and everything she's holding. So it did a pretty good job. I'm going to hold in that Alt Option key again and click here. But I mentioned I really don't want to uh, change anything about her. I want to change the color of the background. So we're going to invert this mask. To do that, hit Command or Control I. Command I on a Mac, Control I on a PC. So I inverted the mask. And to prove it, I'll hold in that Alt Option key and you can see now it's inverted. Now I'm going to reset this and I want to change the color of the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little hand tool right here. And when I do, I'll get an eyedropper and I'll click on the background. So what it did now is it is only going to be applied to the color of the background. I'll go to Hue and I could change the color of the background. Very simple. So you can see it's still, you can do the same thing with adjustment layers. And I, you know, that's a fact. And everyone who mentioned that it's, it's an absolute fact. You could do that. But sometimes it is a little faster and maybe a little more smoother of an operation if you just do it via the adjustment brush tool. Now, I did miss a little part right here. So what I would do is I would add this uh, area, you know, later I should have done that when I did it, but I missed it. Um, but why don't I show you real quick? Why don't we just show you so I'm doing it right? So I have the adjustment brush tool. I want use saturation. I'm going to get this tool here. We're going to come in like this. We're going to select everything like that. All right. So, so far, so good. Now, this little part right in there, it didn't select. If I hold this in, see how it didn't select in there? What I could do now is get a smaller brush and we want to remove this from the selection. So we'll come in here and just go like this. And so we'll click here again. You can see how I did better there. Now I'll invert the mask by hitting Command I on my Mac, Control I on a PC. And then we're going to click on the little hand, select the background, and then we're going to change the hue. And you can see now it's doing this part in here that I missed a second ago. So just didn't catch that the first time, and uh, invariably someone would ask me how to do that, so I wanted to show you without starting the video all over and doing it like I was an expert from the beginning. So hopefully that helps you better utilize the adjustment brush tool and maybe find a use for it uh, for those of you that think it's kind of useless because you could do everything with adjustment layers, and that is true, you can, but sometimes, as I mentioned, it's a little easier to use the adjustment brush tool. 
Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.